Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to be taking a look at SOLIDWORKS CAM and how to locate our parts inside the machine using probing. Now, we're not talking about deep space probing. Uh, that would be trying to indicate our parts at light years away. Eh, not the easiest of things to do, but we are looking at, at different types of probes that we use in our, our machine tools every day, similar to these that, that are for our mills and are for our lays. But the real question is, why do we use a probe? We have to tell the machine where the part is located in space. That's generally done through using a work offset, a G54, 55, etc. Those types of items have to be input into the machine either by the operator or programmatically through uh, the use of probing. Now, once we figure out where the G54000 is on the part, then we can use that work offset for subsequent operations in order to complete those and be ready for the next operation in line. We're going to be taking a look at how that can help us. Now, probing can help with speed and consistency and increase part production, and it does so by reducing setup time and costs at the machine tool. So we're going to be looking at single point type probing operations that are used in z-axis. We can also use, use the probing operations for pockets and bosses, even three-point holes as well. Those types of things are all done very easily inside of SOLIDWORKS CAM. We can automate the G54 resets and we can use our existing models for selection as we get through it. So without further ado, let's get into our setup. Let's start by taking a look at how we can probe this into the proper position so that the machine understands how to cut different features on the component. This is considered to be our second setup possibly. We're going to start with a stock model that's mostly finished and machine out some of the pockets here, some of the pocketing here, and then some of the precision items are actually the relationship between this center hole and some of these these whole patterns. Those are very, very important to us and those are things that we need to indicate in uh, prior to finishing out the operations. In doing so, we can start by using our probing operations from a right menu. It also is located in 2020 SOLIDWORKS on, on our toolbar called Probe Operations. By using a probe operations, we can use a varying set of tools. We can add new tools as well by taking that from our library of varying different sizes. I've chosen one here. We'll go ahead and continue through our operations with this one. Looking at each set, setup, we, we want to indicate in uh, X and Y by taking and selecting two surfaces on our model that are correlative to those surfaces. I'm also going to be setting up a, an entity Z depth that I want to, want to indicate too. So setting that down an eighth should be sufficient. Just like any other operation inside the SOLIDWORKS CAM, you can easily manipulate and move them around. I want this to be my first operation. Now there is one item that I neglected to set in there, and that was our, our work offset. Now we can use that for G54 and go ahead and select that. And in our post, it'll, it'll use G54 at the beginning of our setup to create that. Now the next setup operation that we perform is this, this interior pocket. So when we look at how we can indicate the Z-depth, maybe we rough it in first, then we indicate it in, and then we kind of finish it off. We can set that into position by setting up a new probing operation for our Z-depth inside of that pocket. Taking that super simple, being able to put that in, we'll create a work offset this time for G55, and we're all sorted. Taking a look at, at the first operation, we have our XY, then we have our Z. Uh, the next thing that we need to indicate is a hole so that we can be in the proper alignment in order to maybe do some of the other operations for uh, punching the holes. And now, if we were to do that in um, SOLIDWORKS CAM, we can very easily select our same tool, our probing operation tool. And as soon as we get here, um, What's going to happen by selecting a round circular face, it's going to select from our bore selections. We can also use a three-point uh, bore as well, depending on how you want that, whether it's four or three, it's really up to you. Three is enough, and it doesn't waste any machining time, so let's take a look at what we've done. Now, generating the toolpath is very, very simple and fast, and taking that from there and simulating it will allow us to see exactly what's gone on inside of our, our selection. You can see that very quickly and easily, the uh, probing operation is detecting X and Y. We also see that the, our, our next operation is going to create our, our pocket. Then we come down and create a Z 
offset in order to continue. We'll continue and go forward with our hole, uh, roughing in the hole, and then taking a, a measurement there at the completion of that one. You can see that very quickly and easily it's going to detect where the uh, edges of that boundary for the bore are in order to get us ready for punching our holes. By now I hope you're able to recognize that, that setting up probing routines inside of SolidWorks Cam is very fast. We're able to easily optimize the consistency at the machine tool and reduce the time and setup and cost involved. If you need training for SolidWorks Cam or SolidWorks, we're here to help. Also, if you need a custom post for that, that specialized machine you've got out in the shop, or if you just want to make edits to the post that you have, uh, give us a call. We're happy to help. Other things that you can do inside of SolidWorks Cam are lathes, 4 5 axis indexing, 3 plus 2, uh, even high mach speed machining uh, using Volume Mill, available inside of uh, SolidWorks Cam.